knock. Who's there? Not easy. Life is not easy. But according to the poet, John Greenleaf Witter, he said, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Students of color are underrepresented in computer science. As a matter of fact, if you want to know the truth, according to the Computer Research Association, 13.2% of the U.S. population African Americans represent that amount. However, they are underrepresented in the science of computers. So for the purpose of this talk, I would like to share with you some examples of some stereotypes that will hinder anyone from moving forward, but certainly people of color. Now I have chosen to share some of those parallels that I had to encounter just so that you can get the idea. And I believe that some of those parallels with my walk will certainly go along with the parallels that people of color had to share. So let's get started. I was raised by a single parent. And do you know that no one ever asked me, hey Gail, why did your father walk you down the aisle? Hey, Gail, why didn't your father teach you how to drive a car? Hey, Gail, why didn't your father teach you how to ride a bike? Hey, Gail, why wasn't your father there when your son was born? Because it was the stereotype that got in their thinking. You see, my father wasn't there because he gave the ultimate sacrifice. And that sacrifice was he gave his life in the Vietnam War. The stereotype was he was a sperm donor, and he wasn't. Let's move forward. So I was a non-athletic African-American girl. We were, re we were poor, as defined by the uh, government, because we received free and reduced lunch. I was a first-generation college student. And then when I got to college, guess what? I was date raped. As a, a teenage girl, I was molested. I did not make a good ACT score. And because I didn't make a good ATC score, my guidance counselor, she steered me in the pathway of becoming a crew leader at a local fast food restaurant because she too believed in the stereotype. You know, I could go on and there are more. Can you imagine some of the stereotypes that African Americans or black and brown people have to endure? But I chose not to. I chose to go on. And many of us, we have to go on because sometimes people just do not believe in us for various reasons. But I want you to know that as we continue to move on, we don't have to go through or try to encounter all the different types of stereotypes. I felt like the world was against me. And not only did I feel like the world was against me, I felt like God was against me. Because you see, I felt like God had given all those great talents to my friends, to my family. You know, my friends, I mean, she couldn't make a dress out of toilet paper and I couldn't sew anything. Or my sister who could sing and she could belt out a note like, I, I still can't do it. <laughs> or my boyfriend who could dribble that ball and he could shoot it and hold it and catch that moment. And guess what? Three points every time. Every time he had three points. But you know what? Those were not just my, my obstacles. There were other people's obstacles as well. So now the question remains, or you may ask the question, well, why, Gail? Why should we partner with the local university? Well, the answer is really easy because it is local. 
But let me tell you some more things. Not only is it local, because they want to grow our local black and brown population at the university. Because we want to let people know that in the shows area, we mean it's all inclusive. Because when we say that we care about the show's area, we mean all people. We want to be authentic, we want to be purposeful, and we want to be faithful. And that is why we want to partner with our local university. So what makes it real? Because we hear people all the time say, hey, look, let's partner. You know, when people tell you that it's raining, when it's really, they're just peeing on your leg. It's not like that. It's not like that partnership. It's more of an authentic partnership. Well, we identify those kids who are in computer science information and they are failing in math. And the reason we've chosen math, because math is that thorn in the side for those kids. Math is the subject that is most commonly the problem for those students of black and brown descent. Well, they have the issues. So guess what's traditional? So in traditional studies, when you are failing a class, you have two choices. It's kind of like baseball. You either hit it or you strike out. Well, here's your choice. You can either pray, uh, ask God to help you with the class and you stay in it and, and pray that you make it or you fail. But for this solution, instead of doing those things, you get, we're going to get with uh, the student. We're going to get with the department chair. We're going to get with the, the mentor. And we're going to talk about this. And we're going to define where is the problem? Where is the leak? Where are we bleeding? And once we find that bleeding, we're going to get together and we're going to identify that problem, that common denominator in that math. And then guess what? We're not going to make you take that entire math class over again. We're going to let you drop that class where you're at. Go to another math class where you picked up. And guess what? It's not going to be next semester. It's not. It's going to be the next day. It's going to be the next day where you get to pick up where you left off and you're going to be successful. And that teacher's going to be successful. That dean is going to be successful. And we're going to come together. And guess what? We have another black and brown student who's a graduate of the computer information system. Yes! You're the superhero because the dean, you said it was okay. The instructor, you're the leader. We know that leadership is art. We know that leadership is a science. No one has to tell that professor what to do. We just need permission to do it and do it now, not later. Do it now. Our black and brown students, we're so excited to know that we don't have to wait 5, 10, 15, 20 days to get an answer. The answer can be done, can be taken care of at this moment, at this time, right now. Knock, knock, who's there? Not easy, but it's possible, but it's possible. Remember what I said. We're setting these students up for success. We are purposeful and we are faithful. And we're going to make it happen. Going with the analogy of baseball. We need everyone on base. Everyone working. And we need that person that's up to bat. We need them to hit a home run. And when they hit that home run, everybody's running the bases. Everybody's running the bases. And you know what? It's not a home run until what? Until we get graduation. Yes! Graduation! For us, for 
our university. That's when we win. That's when we've conquered, or at least we've addressed historical, historical educational injustice, equitable access that we have. And when everyone comes around those bases and they touch home plate and we get a high five, we won, we won, we won. So guess what? The strategy, it hasn't changed or it may change. Yes, the strategy will change. But the vision, it has not. Graduation is still on the horizon. The professor hasn't wasted his or her time. The vision has not changed. Did you know the great baseball player Reggie Jackson, did you know he struck out 2,600 times? Did you know that? No, a lot of people don't know that. You know why? It's because he's best known for his home runs. Why be a part of the problem? We have enough problem makers, right? Let's be a part of the solution. Knock, knock, who's there? We're the solution makers. Let's do this. Let's do this. We have black and brown students every day that need our support and we can make it happen. Rest if you must, but don't you quit. Thank you.